Robert Wolford here. And in this lesson, I want to show you how to examine the used disk space on your system. Yeah? And disk space, this is the number one resource if it comes to unplanned outages. Yeah, really, I would say at least one time a month, a customer of mine has a problem related to a completely filled up disk space somewhere. Yeah? And this then leads to user complaints, services that stop working, and it may even lead to data loss. Yes, this hasn't to be a problem if we had a decent monitoring in place. Yeah, but this is a completely different story. Let me show you in this lesson how to get insights into the use disk space and as much important as this, how to examine where and which directories and by which files all the disk space is consumed. And before diving in, if you want to know more about such tools like the ones we talk about here in this lesson, and this time we'll talk about a few more, yeah, have a look at my new book, The Shell Toolbox. In this book, I give you all the tools you need for your day-to-day -day work at the Linux command line, yeah, with explanations and with examples. And you find it at shelltoolbox.com. So this is Shell Toolbox as one single word, Shell Toolbox. Com. So, okay, let's start with the lesson. If you are on a system and you want to see the used or better the still free disk space, use the command df. df is a short command written with only these two characters, yeah, a d and an f, and this stands for disk free. The df command gives you as output a table, a table that shows which file systems the system uses right now and how much they are filled up. A much better readable output of the used disk space you will get with the additional dash h parameter, df dash h. This gives you the same table with the same file systems, but now the size of the file systems and the used disk space is calculated into a human readable format. Yeah, therefore, the command line switch dash h is an abbreviation for human readable. Yeah. And as a result of using this switch, you'll see now gigabytes or terabytes instead of only huge numbers of, of blocks. Yeah. To understand the shown table completely, we have to talk a little bit about how disk space is made available to a Linux system. Yeah, first, each Linux system has a root directory with the name slash. Yeah, the simple slash here is the name of the directory from which every disk space our system has is reachable yeah, by simply switching directories. Yeah, on Linux systems, there is nothing like a drive letter or multiple drive letters like you may know it from, from a Windows system. Yeah, everything we have here is one single directory tree starting with the root directory slash. So, okay, every system has this root file system. And this file system is created at install time and it is typically located on a disk built into the system. Yeah? And this root file system can be extended. It can be extended by simply making additional disks available. And these additional disks, they won't be available via drive letters Instead, these disks are connected into your system via an existing directory. Yeah? So to make an additional disk available for a Linux system, a new directory or a folder, if you prefer this name, a new directory has to be created and the disk has to be, I would say, connected into this directory. Yeah? The phrase for this adding an additional disk into an existing directory, the phrase for this is mounting. The additional disk will be mounted into an existing directory. You can mount a disk into any existing directory, yeah, but typically an empty directory is used to mount a disk into it. The directory could contain data before doing the mount, but this data won't be available after the mount anymore, yeah, until you unmount the disk later again. By the way, the tool for mounting a disk is the command with the name mount. But for now, we don't want to do our own mounts yet. Yeah, we just want to understand how this whole thing works and how it looks like. 
The mounting of additional disks or the mounting of single partitions into the central file system of a Linux system is sometimes done by the installer to simply give you an optimized disk layout for a special use case. And sometimes this mounting is done later on by the admin of the system to better organize the needed disk space. Yeah, to, to, to spend multiple independent disks or multiple independent partitions. You may ask, why the hell should you mount additional disks or partitions into the main file system? Why not simply take a larger disk? Great question. I'll give you the answer or two answers. The first and obvious reason is that there is simply no larger disk available. Yeah, but you need more space yeah? or your system is already installed and running for quite some time. But now in this moment, you need to make more space available without reinstalling the system. Yeah? Another reason, the second one is, and I think this is the more common reason, you want to separate disk areas from other disk areas. Yeah? What do I mean by that? Well, simply, Take a scenario where multiple users are working at the same system. And if you have many users on a system, you simply cannot control their disk space usage completely. Yeah? So let's imagine every user writes his data to disk and doesn't mind the overall free disk space. Yeah? What will happen? Yes, eventually your system disk is filled up to 100%, is completely filled up. And every file or data block written to the disk will result in a disk full error. Yeah. This means not only the users aren't able to write any more data to disk, but also all the other services on the system will get these disk full errors. And eventually your system will perhaps freeze and you will have a hard time to get it up and running again. And now imagine a different disk layout. Not one single disk for the whole file system, but one disk for the main directory and the root file system and a different disk or a different partition for the data that will be written by the individual users. Yeah. In this way, the disk space of the system will be separated from disk space that is available to the users. If in this scenario, the user fills up the disk space, then obviously the user cannot write any more data or files to disk, yeah? but the rest of the system, all the other services and the log daemons, for instance, yeah? they won't be affected by this the users were only able to fill up the disk or partition that was dedicated to them. Yeah. Much better than a completely filled up system disk. To give the user their very own disk space, you have to know where the user's files are typically written to. And if you are on an unmodified Linux system, then the only place where users can persistently store their data this is their home directory. And this home directory is located within the directory slash home. Yeah? So if you mount an additional disk into this directory slash home, then you have separated the disk space the users use for storage from the disk space the rest of the system uses and needs. You have made your system more stable. The same approach can be used not only for users on your system, but also for services. Yeah, like databases or file server services. Every time when services on your system store data to disk and you don't have enough control over the amount of disk space these services need, then best practice is to take the directory where these services write data into and place this directory onto a separate disk or partition. Yeah, in this way, if a service needs way more space than intended, the service only fills up its own disk space and does not affect all the other running services. Great. Yeah. Okay, so now we know that the disk space of our system often consists of more than one single disk or partition, and we know why it is configured this way. And the output of the df command shows you 
all of the currently used disk or partitions. You see one single line for every mounted file system. But pay attention here, not every line represents a mounted disk or partition. Yeah, many Linux systems make heavy use of pseudo file systems. These are file systems that typically don't exist on a real disk, but they are used by the Linux kernel to present useful data to user space processes. Think of these pseudo file systems as a sort of, of RAM disk. RAM disk you typically don't have to care about. Yeah? But what you have to care about are the file systems or partitions whose name starts with slash DEV slash DEV. This is typically an unmistakable sign for a real file system on a disk or partition. Disks are typically named Dave SDA or Dave SDB, Dave SDC, and so on. And these names are the so called device files for disks. You can see them directly if you want to, if you use the ls command to get a list of files within the slash dev slash dev directory. Yeah? Have a look into the dev directory. If these partitions or if these disks contain partitions, and typically they do, then they are named like the corresponding disk with the number of the partition appended. Yeah? So you could have, for instance, a disk dev sda, and on this disk a partition represented by the device file dev sda1. So if you examine the output of the df command, yeah, concentrate on the lines where the name of the mounted file system or partition starts with slash dev slash dev. Yeah. These are all the currently mounted disks or partitions, and if they are full, you have to react. If you want to see all the disks or partitions that are available on your system and not just the mounted ones. Yeah, remember that DF shows you only the file systems that are currently mounted into a directory. If you want to see all disks and partitions, then use the command fdisk, F-D-I-S-K, with the command line switch dash L. This dash L stands for list. Yeah, if you run this command as root, fdisk, L, then you'll get an overview over all the disks and partitions visible to the system. And if you want to have a more convenient output or list, yeah, try to run a comment named lsblk. LSBLK. This comment stands for something like list all the available block devices, LSBLK. And some distributions come with this command pre-installed. And finally, if you see a filled up disk or partition, yeah, you probably want to know where exactly all the disk space has gone. Yeah, for this, you should use the disk usage command, du. Again, a command written only with two letters, a d and a u, du. If you call this command without any additional parameter, it will give you a list of all the files and directories within the current directory <laughs> Not very useful at first glance, but if used wisely, it can show you exactly where you have to search for the wasted space. How you can do this? Okay, let me tell you. First, always use these two command line switches, dash H and dash S. Yeah? While dash H here again stands for the human readable format, the dash S parameter stands for sum up. Yeah. You already know the human readable format from the df command, so if you call the u with dash h, you will always see how many megabytes or gigabytes are used by certain files or directories, yeah, instead of only seeing huge numbers of used blocks. The ds command line switch let the du command sum up the used disk space occupied by single directories, yeah, instead of traversing through every subdirectory it finds. Yeah. And of course, like with many other commands, you can combine these two command line switches into one single parameter, dash s h. Yeah? Okay, so first, always use the du command with the parameter dash s h. Yeah? 
Okay. Second, don't let you show all the files and directories. Instead, let the du command sum up for you exactly one directory level of the folder you are currently examining. So if you, for instance, know that the disk mounted to your home directory is completely for 100% filled up. Yeah? Then you want to know at first in which subdirectory or file yeah, directly within the slash home directory most of the disk space is used. To get this information, simply call the du command with the additional parameter slash home slash asterisk. In this way, you will get a really, really comfortable list with all files and directories directly within the home directory together with their occupied disk space. And if the shown list is long, then you perhaps want to sort the output to get a faster overview. And to accomplish this, use the sort command. As the name already says, the sort command helps you to sort some data. Yeah, for instance, the output of a comma. And the sort command is smart enough to also sort output containing the human readable format the du command gives you. Yeah. It does this if you call the sort command with the dash h command line switch too. To sort the output of the u, just feed its output via the pipe sign, this is the, the vertical bar, straight into the sort command. Yeah, so your command line will look like this, du dash sh slash home slash asterisk pipe sign sort dash h. And the result is a perfectly sorted list of all directories and files directly in slash home sorted by the use disk space. And if this shows you, for instance, that the home directory of, let's say, max, the directory slash home slash max, yeah, that this directory contains the vast majority of the occupied disk space, you can simply modify the command line to now show everything directly within this folder slash home slash max. You just write du dash sh slash home slash max slash asterisk and pipe everything again through the sort command. Yeah. If you use the du command in this way, you, know, you can always build up a picture step by step where all the use this space has gone. So here we had a lot of tools in this lesson. And if you want to know more about such tools and, and more, have a look at my new book, The Shell Toolbox 2.0. In this book, I give you all the tools you need for your day-to-day -day work at the Linux command line with explanations and with examples. Yeah? And you can find it at shelltoolbox.com. So this is shelltoolbox as one single word, shelltoolbox.com. And I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and you learned a lot. I'm Robert Wolfhardt. Thanks for being with me for the last minutes. See you next time.